with the, your offensive line, <coughs> you're replacing three starters there. Uh, what's kind of your vision there? I mean, do you think, you know, is, do you expect maybe a free agent, a guy stepping up in house? What, what do you kind of expect of the offensive line? Well, I think I expect it to be uh, better than last year. You know, that's always the goal is to improve. So along the offensive line, we want to be even better than we were last year. I thought, I think Joe uh, Delisandris does an amazing job coaching the offensive line. Uh, and so, you know, we've still got Joe. So that's that's a big plus. Yeah. We're able to, to bring Ronnie back. I'm excited about that. Ronnie regaining his form really with his, his uh, health and strength. That's going to be a big plus for us. Um, you know, Tyler is just one of, to me, I think he's the best center. You know, I'll, I'll go with Tyler if I'm making that vote. Uh, along those lines and then we've got to find who the next guys are going to be we have guys in house we have uh, free agents that we've signed obviously you know that and then we've got the draft so uh, i'm confident we'll have a, a very good offensive line uh, you just picked up josh jones um, you know what what made him uh, appealing to you guys and is it nice it seems like he has some versatility because you do have three open starting spots right now. no doubt he's been he's been you know he's been on the left side uh, both in uh, arizona and uh, in houston uh, and he's very athletic. He's a former third-round pick, kind of like John Simpson a little bit, if you think about it. Very similar type guy. And John came to us and had a great year, signed a big contract, you know. Uh, he didn't have a lot of options going into last year. I don't think every, anybody was, I don't remember you guys being so confident, you know, that John was going to play that well. Who knew, you know. But he was determined to get better, and he did. And I feel like Josh is, uh, you know, kind of in that same place, and he's a talented guy. Hey, John, where do you rely on the uh, special teams rule for the uh, kickoff? Rule right. Well, the thing the thing about that that I really appreciate, really appreciate about Roger uh, Goodell, is that the passion and the determination to, to, to get the kickoff back into the game, to keep the game as exciting as it can possibly be. I mean, the kickoff return has been around for a long time in football. You know, I'm kind of kind of passionate about that myself, and I just think I think for Roger to be championing that and get behind that and to be uh, exploring every opportunity to keep the kickoff return in the game, make it exciting. That's that's what you know I'm happy about, and I think it's the right thing to do. Is there a concern that um, just the transition to yeah. you know the different alignment yeah. is going to be? Does yeah. everybody understand? Yeah, Cliff. You're not going to leave it alone, huh, Cliff? That's good. I appreciate it. Uh, well, that's the thing. It's always in the details, and that's the challenge we're going to have right now with that. I mean, the line of scrimmage is a big part of football. Uh, it's been around for quite a while, and um, that play kind of takes the line of scrimmage out of it. So it's it's a, it's a drastic kind of move that's going to be way different if it gets passed than what we've seen out of kickoff and kickoff return in the past. It's just a different kind of a football play. So I just appreciate that we're exploring every option. Hopefully, explore every option up to that point to where we've got to make that kind of a that kind of a move. So is that the right move at this time? I don't know. I think that's to be determined, but. I'm confident that you know we'll come to a good conclusion. Don't so, so we explained it to people yesterday. What did you feel like the feedback was, the reaction? Do you think it was well received? It was well received. The, the, the part that's well received is the idea that we want to get returns back. Everybody wants to get returns back. So everybody's on the same page with that. How you go about doing that, there's a lot of questions. Because, you know, it's a big change. So I think there are just a lot of questions. John, I know it's a byproduct of free agency, but I'm curious your thoughts about Patrick Queen going to the Steelers to oh. be What can he do for that? Well, I mean, Patrick's a great player, great guy. Uh, I love Patrick Queen. He's one of my all-time favorite people. You know, we'll, we're going to be friends forever. Uh, I'll give him a hug, I guess, before the game. But you know, it's uh, and I'll root for him, except for then. But uh, he'll bring a great football player, great attitude, great work ethic, everything he brought to us. Um, big fan of Patrick Queen. Same topic. What are you guys uh, losing, Kevin Zeitler, in the Lions game? Right, Kevin Zeitler, uh, all ball every single day. Ball and bakery. I mean, his wife bakes the best stuff. So I think, yeah, everything. I mean, everybody in Detroit in that building is going to get some of the best baked goods that they've ever gotten had in their life. But Kevin's an excellent football player. He's got a lot left in the tank. Very tough, physical guy. Um, kind of, the, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, was about the personality of our team. He kind of established us that way. Hey, do you think the hip drop uh, rule is going to pass? Do I, do I think it's going to pass? I, <laughs> like, I'm not a politician, Cliff. I don't know uh, how that stuff. Well, Jared, Jared, you keep sorry. Calling me Cliff, Cliff's over here. Yeah. Oh, say Cliff. Oh, sorry. He Jared, works, he works Jared, for you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you got your mic. I can't see you guys. Yeah. Uh, no, Jared. I, I, I do. Uh, I don't know, but I'm for it. I, I think the hip drop, taking the hip drop out of the game, is the right thing to do. I think again, Roger and Troy are on the right path with that. The competition committee is on the right path with that. Uh, it, it'd be good. Uh, it'd be good if it does pass, in my opinion. John, in replacing Patrick Queen, you have Trenton Simpson, who... Sorry about that. Where, do you, where are you with him as far as how he progressed last year? And 
uh, some thoughts on bringing back Chris Ford. Do, do you feel yeah. like you, you know, kind of have, you know, had that covered, I guess, so to speak, uh, in replacing Patrick? Yeah. Well, I know we have it covered because it's just the way the league works. You know, we have to have it covered, Luke. I mean, that's just. That's what we do. You have to do that. So hopefully we'll do it well. I'm really excited about the opportunity that Trent's going to have. He's going to be ready for it, and I think he's going to play really well. Uh, you know, Chris Board's another guy that just, you know, I didn't like it when he left. You know, so now I'm happy that he's back. And uh, we had a, we had a great conversation, a great hug, and it's going to really help our special teams. And he's going to he's a he's a good solid backup linebacker as well. John, what kind of head coach are the Seahawks getting in Mike Vidal? Uh, well, they're getting a great person, first of all. Mike is, a, uh, is an A-plus person. His wife, Steph, is even better. And, uh, you know, Steph is a singer. She sings at the, our, our Catholic church uh, in, in Baltimore there. So any Catholic church that needs an amazing singer, they got Steph. So she's the most talented one in the family, no doubt about it. But Mike's a great guy, great coach, smart, detailed, determined, um, passionate, going to work really hard. So uh, they got a great coach. What about his defense, aside from the personnel they have worked so well? Yeah, I mean, he's just, again, he's, it's, we, you know, we, we've built a good system over the years, and Mike's been on the ground floor of that for 10 years. You know, he's been, he's been a part of that, that, uh, that process. So he, uh, as a creator, he understands it inside and out, the way it's organized, and it's sound, and it's, uh, it's simple for the guys to learn. So, yeah, it's a good system. He'll do a great job with it. John, uh, I'm saying likely really blossom, you know, after Mark was in. You guys already knew he was a, he had a lot of talent, but looking forward to next year with Mark and Isaiah maybe playing more together and you know, two tight ends. Is that a possibility? And just your whole view on the, even Charlie, the tight end group, being even more yeah. multiple sets. Yeah, I do. I think those young guys, Cliff, you know, <laughs> hey, how you doing? I, I, I feel hey, bad around, about man. that, man. That's <laughs> terrible. It's like, yeah, it's, I got to look. But I suppose you got the cameras here. Then you kinda, it's hard to look at everybody. So I have, I have my excuse. Um, <laughs> The young tight ends evolving, you know, and growing is going to be a big part of what we're doing. There's no doubt. So, like, I think Charlie's going to take a big step. Isaiah's going to take even another big step. He took a big step last year. He's a talented guy. Uh, you know, those, those two guys. We still got Pat Ricard kind of doing what he does in that kind of hybrid role. And then Mark. You know, Mark. Mark is a star. He's, he's one of the stars, superstars in the, in the National Football League. So, they're all they're all receiving tight ends. They're all willing blockers. Uh, so, I think we're in a good, really good place at tight end. Who's that? Charlie. Charlie. Uh, well, I think being an inline guy would be great for us because we kind of need that, you know. So, I mean, he's six foot six, 270, 275 pounds, right? That's a big body, you know. And Charlie's a tough guy, and he's really determined to be a good blocker. So, that would be the step that you'd like to see him take. Uh, I trust him as a receiver, just a big target and all that. But I'd love to see him, you know, keep keep growing as a blocker. Oh yeah, the uh, you know we drafted two great players in the last three years in the first round. You know, and uh, I would think that Rashad and Zay would would be excited, you know, to kind of step to the, the front together. You know, that's that's where it kind of begins. And then, you know, we get we get a veteran player back who in Nelly who did such a great job last year and kind of he was a former first round pick, you know, and he played at a high level and he's a real versatile player. And then you know after that we got Tylen, you know, I think Tylen gets a chance. He's gonna do well. We got well Sean Ryan in there as a young guy, so you never know how those young guys are gonna keep developing. But we think all of our young guys are really talented guys. And um, we got the draft. So I think we're going to be in great shape at wide receiver. Like I'm really excited. To me, it's you know, and losing Odell, obviously, you know, he's I love Odell, but give those young guys a chance to see how they do. John, John, how do you feel Lamar's success has maybe changed how quarterbacks get evaluated coming out of college? I think uh, I think it's changed everything. I think Lamar's success and how Lamar plays the game has changed everything in terms of how quarterbacks are viewed, how they're viewed by scouts, how they're viewed by coaches how they're viewed by the fans, you know, how they're viewed by society. And uh, that's, a, that's a really cool thing. Do you think that impacts kids coming out now and kind of what they view their ceiling as? I absolutely do. I, to me, it's, a, it's, a, it's just something that shows, it's just one more piece in the puzzle that shows young people, you know, 
what they can do and what they're capable of doing and what's out there for them in this country, and that's a great thing. New staff in Washington, do you guys think you'll keep the joint practices going? Uh, we have to see. We haven't got the uh, preseason schedule yet, so I hope we can. Uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. I know Dan a little bit, and we'll see if that's something they want to do. Thanks. John, um, do you, do you, are you still interested in bringing either Dobbins or Dalvin Cook back, or are you still kind of looking at that running back market, knowing that, yeah, you obviously got Derrick Henry, but Keith Mitchell is still going to kind of be coming this way back? Yeah, I think we're just going to kind of see how it shakes out. You know, it's uh, – some moving pieces to that part, you know, and uh, I'll just kind of let Eric handle that. But if we bring someone back, if we bring one of those two guys back, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, if we're not able to do it, I, you know, we'll, we'll find some young guys. John, we haven't talked to you since uh, Arthur Millett resigned. You're talking about what he brings, you know, coming back in that slot play piece, and also the versatility of your secondary kind of with so many guys who can play multiple positions. It kind of goes hand in hand. I mean, your point is exactly right. Arthur can play. He's, he's, a, he's a great slot, but he can play outside if you need him to play outside. He's a special teams player, too. He's a good player across the board. I just love the way he plays. I like his style, you know. The guy is all heart. He's a talented guy. He's, he's always been an underrated kind of a guy. And, he, and he, like he said, he found a home with us in Baltimore. Um, and then, you know, look at a guy like Ardarius Washington. Here's another versatile player. He can play in the slot for us when he was healthy. He's played great. Hopefully he can, you know, get a whole season under his belt. But he can also play safety. So he gives us a swing guy there. And then, you know, you got Marlon who plays outside, but he can play in the slot, play all across the board on either side. Uh, and then Brandon can do the same, uh, but he's more outside, although he can go to safety. So uh, those guys being versatile is a big plus. John, I know every, you know, offense is always evolving, but, you know, with Derrick Henry, new, you know, different offense, look to the offensive line, how different do you think this offense with Lamar will look this upcoming season? Uh, I don't know. You never know. I mean, it'll, it'll look different. There's no doubt about that. That's the one thing that we, we believe in, in, in keeping it moving. You know, you can't, you can never keep it the same. Um, my wife, she's, she reads a lot of sniper books, you know, and uh, she showed me this quote on the plane coming down that one of the, one of the snipers from Afghanistan was talking about, and they were talking about one of their missions, and, and whoever they were going against in war created a pattern. And, uh, and the sniper was able to take advantage of it, right? It's like no patterns. You know, we don't want patterns. We don't want to be predictable in what we're doing, it, to use the analogy, yeah. okay? Um, I'm not advocating for snipers or something like that, all right? Just to be clear. But, you know, you can learn lessons from a lot of people, right? So, yeah, we want to keep it moving. I'm going to be sorry I said that, I think. <laughs> I see Michelle over there shaking her head like, not good, not good. John, I know uh, Clowney's taken some visits. There have been some reports of other teams have an interest. Where are you guys with him? Are you maintaining dialogue? And you know, is there still optimism that, you know, that he can come back? There is uh, about uh, JD and also about Kyle. There's optimism with both. With both, I've been texting with JD and Kyle, you know, here and there over the last uh, weeks. And so, uh, yeah, I'm hopeful we get we get one or both of them back. Do you have any sense of a timetable for when they might make a decision? I don't know. I think it's just business, you know. John, what are, what are some of the things that make Keith Williams a, a good coach? What are the things give him about? Keith is uh, one of the all-time great um, coaches of, uh, of, de of, of detailed route running. He's a great co route running coach, you know, and all the other things that go with He's also great with the guys. He relates well with the guys. He's got relationships with the guys. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he knows the game. You know, he knows the structure, the scheme, and all that really well. But, but I think he's – I've never seen a better – route running coach than Keith and you know we're going to miss that. He's, Saints are getting a great coach. It's been some time since you made your coaching hires and talked about them. Have you gotten to know any of them a little bit better and how are they all coming together? Yeah, uh, got, yeah I knew some of, the, some of the guys I knew, uh, every, getting to know everybody better every day I guess, right? But uh, I'm really excited about the new staff. I like the coaches. I like, the, I, like, uh, I, like, I, like, I like what they're bringing to the table as far as uh, just new ideas. Uh, new ways to look at the game. Um, we'll keep it moving because we've got some new coaches to bring in some new ideas, and, and that's kind of how you get better. Yeah, you just kind of do it by the by the opportunities you get, the people that you have. So we'll have uh, we'll have someone in that room. Uh, that's kind of we have, have somebody in mind right now. So uh, we'll see if that if that shakes out. Kind of a young guy, younger coach, kind of in that role. Is there a kind of trait that you guys want from your line? You know, 
right tackle, we know Pat Lele is maybe not going to shoot for gap stuff. Patrick, you know, maybe more zone stuff. Is there something that I'm looking at once to do that you guys kind of want to prioritize that, that offensive line spot? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, linemen have to, the bottom line is that when you watch tape, is, is, is a lineman, or is, he, is he blocking people? You know, you've got to be able to block people. You know, I know it's like oversimplistic because you get into, you know, skill sets and foot speed and range and movement ability versus anchor and all those different kind of things that you kind of got to lay out. But to me, can they control the block and finish a block? You know, so, you know, you know, Daniel, you say he's more of a gap scheme guy because of his size and his, his hip. He can come off the ball, right? And that's what we want Daniel to do because that's what he was kind of born to do. But he can, he can make a reach block too. He's got great feet and he can sustain a block. So the ability to sustain a block either way could, to me, whether it's runner pass, zone or gap, or a man drive block is really the bottom line. And then where they kind of maybe excel a little bit more, you kind of kind of game plan and call plays a little more that way. Jones, is Voorhees going to be ready for, is he fully go, full go now? He's full go. He'll be full go when we come back for the off season, yeah. Um, obviously, Snoop's not coming back as the backup. He's talking about the backup quarterback situation with Leek and Josh and right. what you're seeing from what you hope to see before this. Yeah, I mean, Josh, uh, Josh would be the backup quarterback, you know. Uh, he's, uh, he's coming back. Uh, thrilled to have him back. I think he's, he's, he can still play at a really high level. He knows the offense inside and out. He, he contributes to the offense. He and Lamar have a great relationship. So uh, I think he brings so much to us. Um, Malik is just, you know, kind of just an opportunity for him. He's a great guy. Uh, love, love his personality. Uh, from what I can see, his work ethic is really good, all those kind of things. Uh, so that's just see what happens with that and see how he looks when we get out there. John, what kind of problems did Aaron Donald present? <laughs> oh, well, we just talked about linemen being able, to, being able to block people. That was kind of the trait, the defining trait for linemen is blocking people, right? Aaron Donald's pretty much unblockable, you know, with one guy. Uh, really, the ability for him to, to ruin the play before the play gets started, I would say, is the thing that jumps out of my mind. You know, he makes one little movement or twitches or kind of looks a certain way. Next thing you know, he's in the backfield making a tackle. And you're kind of like, what happened? He seemed to make a habit of doing that with offenses. <laughs> He didn't do anything. We put a couple guys on him. Yeah. <laughs> that was a um, David Ajabo. Um, obviously, had been injuries the last couple of years kept him from blocking. Can you talk about where he is and how important of a year this should be for him to kind of you know show what he what he can do? Yeah, I think David's gonna just. I think he's gonna break out. You know, I think he and Adafe are you know going to be partners in crime. You know, I think those guys are going to play great together. Uh, they're, uh, they're ready to roll, man. I mean, every time I talk to them, every time I see them, they're brimming with enthusiasm. They're, they're, they're working hard. And he's healthy. They're both healthy. Can't wait to get to work with those guys. How are you? Good. Hey. I'm just curious, what's your process for um, you know, going through with your coordinators from last year, the things that you kind of assess that um, obviously when you fly, catch the big line, and then yeah, that's kind of the bottom line, kind of what you said there at the, 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 the last part of it, I think more than anything, is just keep improving and getting better. So, you know, special teams wise with Chris Horton, who I think is an amazing coach, you know, we got, we're looking at the new kickoff rules and then uh, personnel and then scheme. So, you know, where can we tweak the scheme and, and the way we teach our techniques? So that's kind of set, but there's still th ways we can improve. Defensively, we'll start with Zach Orr. I mean, Zach's going to be a new coordinator. We've got, you know, new coaches on defense. Uh, so that's going to be huge. I mean, that's, uh, that's taking what we do with, and adding the, the ideas and the talents that the new coaches have and taking Zach's personality and putting his stamp on it. Uh, then offensively, first year to second year is big. So the, the opportunity to take an offense that was pretty dramatically different you know it was it was like the old offense or the, the previous offense and the fact that it was so different from what everybody else was doing so I think it's 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 alike in that it's different but it's definitely different than what we did so with that there comes a lot of a lot of nuances a lot of a lot of details that you've got to you know become really good at to protect plays and the way you do it in this offense is different than the way you did it in the, pre, in the previous offense we were running so our ability to take the next step Todd leading that. We've got great coaches and Greg Lewis and Willie Taggart, uh, George Godsey. Uh, all those guys just do a phenomenal job working together. Travis Switzer of uh, building this thing. So we're kind of we're 
we're way, way underwater right now, working on taking the next step in our offense, and I'm excited about where we're going. Thanks. John, uh, sorry, uh, sorry if you asked this already, being such a, a special teams background, just curious to hear your thoughts on the kickoff proposal. Yeah, and we talked about that. I'm just, I'm excited about the, I'm excited about, I just think Roger Goodell is doing a great job of driving, bringing the, trying to bring the kickoff return back into the game. Make it exciting for the fans. The fans, the fans like excitement, right? So you want a play that's more than a ceremonial play, and it's been a ceremonial play uh, really for the last number of years. And uh, so a way to bring it back and bring it back safely, that's what I'm for. How we go about doing that, that's the conversation. And it's not easy, but we'll come to something really good. The look of the play, is that? That can be hard to get over a little bit. Uh, well, it's a lot. There's a lot to it. It's just really different. You know, it doesn't have a line of scrimmage. It's just a different play to get your arms around. And really, the biggest thing about it, when you really dig dig down deep, is that there's just unpredictable. There's a lot of unintended consequences, and you don't know what it's going to look like. So that's what everybody's kind of trying to get their arms around. John Fossil said yesterday that he asked the most questions when he was presenting it to mm -hmm. the group. What were your questions, and is that a fair <laughs> assessment? It is, and uh, and his, his answers were very good. And John did a great job, and, and, and Darren Rizzi, Riz did a great job too. Those guys are great coaches, and I think they were tasked with making that play work. Uh, and uh, they they went to work on that, and they figured out a way to make the play workable. So I'm satisfied that the play is workable. I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm not sure there's not a better answer, maybe, but uh, that's what uh, you know. Everybody's got to put their heads together and kind of decide, then really just see how it works out. Have you lobbied the shot? Uh, yeah, we talked about it last night, as a matter of fact. So I don't know what we're going to do yet. We'll see, honestly. <laughs> what do you think of the first touching rule proposal? I think it makes sense, the Eagles proposal. Yeah, it's good. It's a, it's, a, it's kind of cleaning things up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I like it. John, uh, as Lamar's gone throughout his career, his, his rushes have gone down. Do you think even with the addition of a Derrick Henry, do you think it will still his, you know, Lamar's, you know, the design runs and even his scramble will even go down even further? I don't know. Um, you know. Lamar is going to play the way Lamar plays, and that's what I'm for. You know, I love the way he plays the game. I think he's intuitively and intelligently uh, a, just a, a, a phenomenal football player. You know, he sees the game in a very unique ways, very smart ways. So I'm for him playing the way that he plays, you know, and I think that just Derrick Henry being there plus Lamar plus the other guys, it's a good formula. I think last year you're undertaking for the cost with the wide receivers. Uh, yeah, I do. But if I told you that, we kind of given away our draft plans, uh, wouldn't we? Yeah, it's a very, very clever way to ask the question. Though. This guy's smart. <laughs> yeah, I have. My, I'm, I'm finished with my first round of assignments. Now I, I'm going to the second level after this these meetings. I can yeah, tell you that. For, uh, what positions are especially defense? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I don't have a theory. I don't have an answer for you on that. Eric, he does a good job answering those. You'll probably see him around. Why, is, why aren't the GMs here doing this? Oh, they are? Do they do the media? Oh, okay. I know about Lamar, and obviously you text him a lot, um, and you were saying that he kind of had some ideas at the end of the season. What seems to be his self-assessment, what he's working on, and what he thinks is the next step should be over the off season? Yeah, Lamar, his feelings about his next step, you know, He's got a lot of thoughts. I mean, he's, 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 uh, it's, it's like any, there's no one football thing, you know. I think he's looking at every aspect of his game. He starts with himself. That's what I love about Lamar. What can I do better? And that's why he continues to improve. And then he goes to what we need, you know, what we need schematically in his, in his view. And, he, you know, he trusts the coaches and he wants to, like, he, we talked that week and uh, shared ideas schematically, also personnel wise. And then we're kind of working on that now, and he'll come back. And he'll look at everything, and we'll want to know what he thinks. You know, like, do you prefer this or this? I'm more comfortable in this direction or that direction? You know, what do you like? Any other ideas you had since since we talked last? And Lamar will be part of the architect. I, I believe he'll be a big part of the architect on the on the offense. He's having some fun saying Who's that? Lamar. Lamar. Just bringing Lamar together. Yeah, yeah, Lamar. Yeah, Lamar's. <laughs> that's. I'd say it's one of his greatest strengths as a locker room. You know, he's just. He's just you. You. You know him. I mean, he, he. What you see is what you get, and even like more fun because he's got his guard up a little bit. I'm sure. You know, his public persona, but when he lets his guard down, he's just kind of being who he is. He's funny, funny dude, a funny guy. 
Um, lovable guy. He's just a, he, he likes people. He's a, he's a magnet, you know, in the locker room. The guys love him. Has he provided a wish list of guys who he would like to see? <laughs> he's looking at guys now. Yeah, yeah. He and I agree on a few guys. Yeah, we haven't disagreed on anybody yet. So sharing our vision. Is it, together. Is, is it talking about wide receivers, tight ends, or are you talking about anybody like a position group? Well, he's more interested in the wide receivers and tight ends. Yeah, he hasn't hasn't weighed in on any offensive linemen nah, just yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys uh, traded Moses, I think there was some confusion among the fans because it seemed like he was on a relatively team friendly deal. You know, had dealt with injuries. So you get that fixed this offseason. I guess, what would you kind of explain the decision to move on to and embrace this next chapter? Yeah, um, that's that's a tough explanation because I think the fans are right in the sense that wow, you know, that's a, just looking at that as a, as a signal, a single move. You know, it, it was he's a, he's a heck of a player. Everybody loves him. He works hard. He's a, he's productive. Played through injuries last year and was on a team friendly contract. But in the big picture, when you kind of step back and you looked at the whole cap structure, uh, it was it was tight. You know, and that was an opportunity I think where you know unfortunately trade. Pick up the pick up the cap space, create some uh, cushion a little bit, a little bit of a buffer that we needed, and we have a you know we have a young player there that has a chance to to, to, to kind of step forward and play well. So that was a tough decision. John, as now the second longest tenured coach in the, in the league, right now, did you ever take time to think about like your future at all or anything like that? Or like you know, how long you want? I hope to have one. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm for I'm for having a future. Um, not, not much more than the immediate future, to be honest with you. You know, I think about the past because someone showed me a clip of our press conference, and uh, they asked me if it if it felt like 30 years ago. I said no, but it did look like 30 years ago. You know, Steve and I both looked a lot younger in that press conference. So you know, you look, you look, you do. You look in the mirror or whatever, and you say, "Wow, this is really amazing." And the people that we've been around, this, the, 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 the great moments and the tough moments. Um, but that's what makes it so great, and I just I love what I'm doing. I love these kind of the setting here. I love I love you guys, you gals. I believe it or not, you know, it's uh, it's something that you know someday, you know, we're all gonna look back on and we're gonna say, wow, that was pretty cool. We got a chance to do that. So I just want to like look look at it right now and say, wow, this is pretty cool that we get a chance to do that and make the most of it. John, do you is Kyle Lele just a tackle at this point, or is there a chance that he could move inside? I would say let's focus a tackle right now. You know, definitely, Jeff. Let's let's see if we can get that right tackle thing and give him a chance to win the job. Uh, John, along those lines, is, is uh, Pat staying at fullback? He's not moving the guard or anything. Correct. Yes. Yes. S saner heads have prevailed. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> Pat, yeah, he's he's great at what he does. So let's let's let him be great. John, uh, have you guys heard one way or the other from the NFL on? Anything related to Jay, just the status of anything? No updates. Uh, that's, I don't really have any details on that. Um, I, don't, I don't have nothing I can really share on that right now that would help. John, there was a report earlier in the offseason that you guys might be bringing Jerry Rossford back in some capacity. Is there anything you can share with that? I mean, yeah. were there talks? Was there a decision just not to do it? Like, what? Yeah, no, I, I thought that was way like overblown, you know, and, and Jerry. Jerry, I talk to Jerry a lot. You know, Jerry's one of he, he's my best friend. You know, uh, I think he's a, he's a great coach, and uh, and he's he's a wise person. You know, so you, you seek you seek wisdom and advice where you can. So in some form or fashion, I think you know if, and Jerry did it with Denver. He did that, and then he became the head coach for a couple couple games. So you know, I'm, I'm sure Jerry's interested, or he told me that he might might maybe in some role if we wanted him, if we needed him. And I'm like, well, that'd be cool. You know, and and let's kind of see where that goes. You know, and see if there is something. That would make sense, but not a, not on a full-time type basis. That was really never the conversation. That's not what we talked about. Uh, and then we'll just see where we go with our staff and see if there's a place we're just kind of as a as a consultant advisor type of a of a position that would help us. Only if it would help us. So, could you say it again? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. I was sitting right across in the meeting from from Joe and from my brother Jim, you know, so couldn't help but like, you know, catch catch their eye. Uh, but we weren't we weren't uh, we weren't making faces or anything. It was it's just neat to see those guys. And Mike was sitting right over there. That was cool. Um, Joe is Joe's wonderful. You know, he's just a, he's a great person. 
you kind of you miss those guys, and you see come back and you see them, and you're like, man, I miss you, you know. But you move forward, and they get their opportunity, and that's great. It seems like with Odell, though. I mean, you guys love him. He loved to be here. What kind of do you think went into the fact that you know he is going to probably play elsewhere this year? I just think it was more. I think it was just more financial. You know, I think it has more to do with it. I'm sure I didn't. I wasn't involved in any of that, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure that that he and Eric talked, and it just wasn't going to work out. You know, just from a number standpoint, probably as much from where we're at. You know, we're in a tight set cap type situation, and kind of was a mutual understanding. I think that way. In terms of Randy Brown, what does he mean to you? What does he mean for your organization? Let's be a special teams guy. Now you look at. Two top highest paid kickers now. He's a Brown, he's a Brown associate. So, so are you are you are you related to Randy? Or <laughs> Jersey, that's what oh, you're right. Jersey guy. Okay, yeah. Uh, in all seriousness, Randy Brown's a great coach. You know, I think he's uh, he's he's a pioneer. Uh, the, you know, how he got into the league, what he's done, is he was the first one to do it really. And there was a couple other guys kind of back back in those days with Randy. And Randy's he's he's been around for a long time. He now he knows the special teams game inside and out. He knows the rules really well. He brings a, a unique personality as everybody around here, you know, when they laugh, you know, he's, as you know, he's one of a kind. And uh, I think he does a great job with those guys. He coaches the specialists really like nobody else in the league. But even beyond that, you know, he coaches the special teams too. So uh, he's, been a, he's been a really strong, uh, he's been a strong addition for us. He's been a strong part of what we've accomplished over the years. You can do two more guys. It happens to me a lot too. Anybody else? John, one guy we didn't get a chance to ask you about too much, but Roger Washington last year. What did you make of his season? And um, it just didn't seem like maybe he stood out quite as much as he did the year before. I mean, you guys extended him last summer. I mean, just where do you think you know, kind of where he is right now? Yeah, Brody. I, mean, I saw Brody in the building just last week. He's in there lifting weights and working hard. You know, that's the thing. And um, I, I, I thought he had a good season last year, and uh, he's going to be who he is. You know, he's going to be a very good player for us. He's going to be a guy that's going to. He's going, to, he's going to stop the run. He's going to be where he's supposed to be. He's going to be running to the ball. He's going to be pressuring the quarterback from the inside, pushing the pocket. Uh, he gives us valuable reps, and he's he's a great teammate. So you got to have those kind of guys. I mean, those nut and bolt guys like Broderick Washington are guys that kind of you get you. That, that's part of your structure, man. If you don't have guys like that, the structure doesn't hold together. So that's why we that's why we love him. So what he brings to the table is, is, is just exactly what we need him to bring to the table. So I expect him to have a great year and kind of do what he does. I think you mentioned at the combine about your admiration for the Dolphins and what they do with RPOs and just getting the ball out quickly. Maybe not, maybe not RPOs, but what the Dolphins do. Oh, the Dolphins. To get the ball out quickly. Yeah. Um, I guess you guys use more RPOs this year. Uh, Lamar got the ball out quicker. Do you want to see that kind of continue? And I guess how would you kind of evaluate the increased role of RPOs? Yeah, I mean, I think we're in the right place with our RPOs. I don't think it's something that we're going to, like, go wholesale towards because Lamar's got so many different ways he plays the game and there's other things we like to do, to be honest with you. So RPOs are a part of it. I don't see us going toward, like, anybody's specific offense that runs those more than anybody else or like anybody else because our quarterback is different, you know, than anybody else's. So none of these quarterbacks are exactly the same. And to me, you've got to build the offense around your specific guy. So uh, RPOs will be a part of what we're doing for sure. Uh, they're not going to be the main part of what we're doing. It, it really hasn't been that way. It's not like the number one thing we do. Some teams it is. 